If you want to know more about the human tree of life and evolution, ancient inventions, ancient structures, ancient queens, new archaeological discoveries, then don't forget to subscribe to the channel and click that bell icon because I also do the occasional live stream. Did you know that real Hobbit people used to exist on the planet a long time ago? Hold up, hold up. Hobbitses, you say? I hear you think. Little hobbitses used to roam the earth? Now, you might wonder, what is she on about and how long ago would this have been the case? Well, first of all, no, I did not turn into a Tolkien themed channel and I'm not telling you grand tales. And the time frame of when these archaic humans would have roamed the earth would have been about 50,000 to 190,000 years ago at least. My name is Kaylee. And in this video, I'm going to give you a quick overview of Homo floresiensis, who are indeed often referred to as hobbits by the scientific community. And I would like to note upfront that this is not a complete deep dive, as there will be more separate videos about Homo floresiensis in the future, including one or two interviews with experts on Homo floresiensis, because I do want to do them justice. They deserve that. So first, let's take a look into the discovery of the first fossils that showed the existence of Homo floresiensis, as this did not happen too long ago, actually. Back in September of 2003, a team of archaeologists was looking for evidence of the original migration of modern humans from Asia to Australia. So these archaeologists were on the Indonesian island of Flores, when they discovered a nearly complete skeleton of a small person in the Liangbua cave and this skeleton is now known as LB1. In the excavations that followed in the years after, there have been seven more skeletons found in the cave. Usually, when archaeologists find such old bones, they are fossilized, but that was not the case, which means that the bones had a consistency of wet blotting paper. So once the bones were exposed from the soil, they had to be left to dry before they were able to dug them up. There are now a total of 15 individuals found of Homo floresiensis, although some of these individuals are only represented by teeth and bone fragments. In the cave, the archaeologists found a number of stone tools that were quite small and would fit perfectly to be used by these small humans. And I hear you think, how small are we actually talking about here? Like, how small? How little? How small would they actually be? I called them hobbitses for fun in the opening of the video because, I mean, I love Lord of the Rings and I love to say hobbitses, but how small are they actually? The tallest skeleton that they have found so far stood at 1.1 meters, which is 3 feet and 7 inches. That's small. And they would have weighed approximately 30 kilograms, which is about 66 pounds on average. Like I said, that's small. So if we look at the description of the height of a hobbit given by Tolkien, Homo floresiensis falls exactly within those measurements. Them filthy hobbitses. Okay, but back to being serious because we know I like to have fun, but this is still a serious video. Because I'm not sure about you, but I am extremely intrigued by these archaic humans who lived in the same time frame as Neanderthals, Denisovans, modern humans, and the possible subspecies of Homo longi that we talked about in the previous video. For quite a while, it was believed that Homo floresiensis was simply a Homo sapiens with a birth defect. Until, of course, as you can imagine, more bones of different individuals were found and it was shown that it was indeed a new species or subspecies if you want to look at it that way. Species, subspecies, lineage, we talked about that in the previous video. Whatever you want to call it. But Homo floresiensis most likely shares the same ancestor as modern humans, Neanderthals and Denisovans if we go back far enough. But their lineage would have split off much earlier than the other mentioned subspecies. For a while, researchers were felt inclined to put Homo floresiensis in its own genus, known as Sudanthropos floresianus, which translates to Sunda human from Flores. But it was ultimately decided to place floresiensis into the Homo genus. 
especially because Homo floresiensis has several dental similarities to Homo erectus, which could point to Homo erectus being the ancestor of both Homo floresiensis and that they have that ancestor in common with modern humans, Neanderthals and Denisovans. It's a possibility. The ancestors of Homo floresiensis must have been from one of the earliest out of Africa hominid migrations, reaching the island approximately one million years ago. Since the island of Flores is neighboring a deep strait in the seabed and remained isolated during the last glacial period, the ancestors of Homo floresiensis could have only reached the island by transport over water. Even though during a glacial period sea levels are low and they were low during this time it was only able for them to reach the island by for instance bamboo rafts or something like that because it was about a million years ago they couldn't have swam it was way too far in 2016 a partial jaw and some fossilized teeth were found from this assumed ancestor of floresiensis at matamenge on the island of flores approximately 74 kilometers away from liang bua cave this jaw fragment and these teeth date to approximately 700,000 years ago, and they're even smaller than the Floresiensis fossils. Phylogenetic analysis published in 2017 suggests that Homo floresiensis was descendant from the same ancestor of Homo habilis, which does point to a very early out of Africa migration. This does refute the hypothesis that Homo erectus could have been the common ancestor because the bone structure of Erectus and Floresiensis are too different to have belonged to the same ancestor. Of course, as you can imagine, evidence pointing in a certain direction doesn't necessarily mean that that is 100% factual evidence. We do know, and thankfully the researchers do understand and realize that more analysis and research needs to be done, but contracting DNA samples from these Bones is incredibly difficult. For one, the bones haven't really fossilized like we've seen in other specimens. And when they tried to extract DNA from the teeth, the dentin had not enough concentration of DNA to successfully extract any. So it's now proposed that researchers try again to extract DNA from the teeth, but this time from the cementum, as it should have a higher concentration of DNA. So for more conclusive information about the ancestry of Homo floresiensis, we need to be patient and hopeful that they will be able to extract DNA from the specimen they've uncovered so far, or from new specimen that they might uncover in the future. There is, however, some controversy about the current specimen as some of them have been damaged in early December of 2004 by Indonesian paleoanthropologist Toku Jacob, when he removed most of the remains from their repository at the Jakarta's National Research Center of Archaeology. He kept the specimen for three months, while other scientists were incredibly afraid that important scientific evidence would be lost or damaged because of this. And unfortunately, their fear was based on truth, as Jacob returned the specimen in February 2005, with parts that were severely damaged and missing even two leg bones. That's not okay. I would be pissed if I was part of the scientific community back then. I would have been pissed. So I've decided to create a separate video about this and the controversy surrounding paleoanthropologist Toike Jacob and the effect that his work had on other researchers and the Liang Bois cave. LB1's body seems to be a bit smaller than, for instance, Lucy from the Australopithecines, who lived approximately 3 million years ago. And Homo floresiensis might be the smallest member of the archaic human group that evolved from the Australopithecines. So it is believed that their small size is an effect of the natural process of insular dwarfism which is the process and condition of large animals evolving or reducing their body size when their living area is limited to a small environment. This happens primarily on islands. And lo and behold, Homo floresiensis was discovered on the island of Flores. So this hypothesis therefore checks out. 
So let's take a quick look into the morphology of Homo floresiensis. What are some of the key features of what they looked like? They were small, as I mentioned earlier, approximately one meters and weighed approximately 30 kilograms, which isn't much. They had hunched shoulders and a wide pelvis, giving them a very different body shape than us modern humans. We have straight shoulders and a small pelvis or like a narrow pelvis. Their cranial shape was long and low, resembling the shape of Homo erectus more than Homo sapiens. They had a receding and small forehead with a flat face and a narrow nose. We have, well, I have a five head, but I mean, I think all y'all know that by now. My forehead is huge. They had relative large jaws and teeth, but they lacked the bony point of the chin. Their feet were quite long when compared to their overall size. They had a short big toe and the arch was quite flat. Their leg bones were wide compared to their overall length and they had relative long arms. The shoulder shape made it seem like they were hunched because the shoulder was pointed forwards. Of course there are more differences, but like I said, I would only touch on a few key features in their morphology. This video doesn't need to be 30 or 40 minutes long. I have a life, you guys have a life. We all have things we need to do as well. So 20 minutes tops for a video like this, good enough. So now let's take a look into the time frame of when Homo floresiensis lived on the island. The oldest date that we have come from tools that were discovered that belong to them. They date from approximately 190,000 years ago when they made these tools. Artifacts from stone were mainly flakes, points, blades, and some micro blades that could have been used as barbs. So some of these stone tools were discovered among the skeletal remains of LB1. But most of these stone tools that belong to Homo floresiensis were discovered at a location near the remains of an extinct pygmy elephant Stegodon. That is another name for a very tiny elephant. They probably looked incredibly cute. This suggests that the Floresiensis people hunted the small elephants, which is also evident from the cut marks on some of the Stegodon bones, which suggests that some of the tools that they found were used to process meat. Other tools were found to have been used for working wood and fibrous materials, like for instance, spear shaft making or trap making, which are both very important things. Many of the Stegodon bones were charred, which indicates that Floresiensis was able to control fire for cooking, which Neanderthals, Denisovans, and Homo sapiens were able to do as well around the same time. So even though their brain was much smaller than the just now mentioned other archaic humans, they were at least intelligent enough to create tools and to control fire. But there is no evidence of deliberate burials. So when looking at intelligence and emotional connection, they might have lacked more in that department. It is possible. So you may ask yourself, how much smaller was their brain? Quite a bit. The brain of individual LB1 was estimated to have a volume of 380 cubic centimeters which is remarkably small when compared to the brain of Homo sapiens at approximately 1,274 cubic centimeters. When compared to Homo neanderthalensis at a brain size of approximately 1,410 cubic centimeters, we can clearly see how absolutely tiny the brain of Homo floresiensis really was. So, as you can imagine, there is a lot more that we can say about Homo floresiensis and a lot more new information that will be brought to the public as time goes on. Controversies to unravel and hopefully one day DNA analysis that can be carried out. Without a doubt. I know that I will be making a few more videos on Homo floresiensis, but as an introduction on the channel of this species, I think I gave you quite a good overview of who they were, where they lived, where they possibly came from, their possible lineage. We do know that approximately 60,000 or 50,000 years ago, Homo floresiensis disappeared around the same time as the Stegodon that disappeared. And this was also the same time frame when modern humans arrived in the area. 
The youngest bone of a Homo floresiensis individual date from approximately 60,000 years ago. And the youngest stone tools that we've discovered date from approximately 50,000 years ago. So that's where those two time frames come from. But as you can see, there is a difference of 10,000 years. Researchers have found bones from modern humans dating to approximately 46,000 years ago in the same cave. So this does indicate that the arrival of modern humans on the island and in their environment, that they replaced the Floresiensis inhabitants. Many archaeologists and anthropologists believe that it was due to the arrival of Homo sapiens in the region that Homo floresiensis and the Stegodon disappeared. That it was the modern humans who had a hand in the demise of the little hobbitses. So of course we won't be sure as long as it's just a smoking gun. We still need to find the bullet if we want this to be factually proven instead of it being a hypothesis. But that's the beauty of science. It keeps evolving. We will uncover new information, create new techniques, and as time goes on, we will learn more and more about humanity's ancient past and the human tree of life. If you enjoyed watching, then don't forget to give it a thumbs up, subscribe if you'd like to see more of these kind of videos, and click that bell icon if you want to be notified every time I upload. If you haven't seen my previous videos yet, then click the card in the upper right corner, or click one of the links in the description down below, or click a video in the end card. I always cater to your needs. And I would like to say a massive thank you to everyone supporting me in the channel, my channel members, my patrons. I am eternally grateful for your support of me. Y'all are some filthy hobbitses. Leave me a comment and tell me where you as a hobbit come from. I'm a hobbit from the Netherlands, but I'm not a hobbit because I'm way too tall. Average for the Netherlands, but when compared to like the average height of an American, I'm tall, I'm a giant, but it's my precious. Just so we know, just so we're all clear, it's my precious. The filthy little hobbitses.